Let's get to it. Mm. Sabbath peace. No, save the stack for tomorrow. It's another, Come you know back. what Sabbath is? You know what the Sabbath is? You're going to learn in the morning. We're about to be talking about the, the Sabbath in the morning. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that is given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is, it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, Anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, the ones that, you know what I'm saying, we don't even know about. You know what I'm saying? They might have one on the airplane right now. Somebody travel on the boat. Y'all heard about the Houthis? They call them Houthis. That's a, that's a wild name for like a terrorist group, a so-called terrorist group. But they call them Houthis. You got Houthis. I guess if they holding people hostage if they come through the, the, the Red Sea. You know what I'm saying? You seen that? They hold... Yeah, they out there with them, right? And they telling them, anybody who side with Israel against the Palestinians, if y'all try to come through here, we holding you down. So they ain't, I heard they ain't killed nobody or nothing yet. But they took, they take over these boats, these big old ships that we get all our materials from that come ship over to us. They all got to come through there. That's like where the middle of the world kind of connects right there they hold them boys down so they got these boys going all the way around africa to get their goods around so everything about to go up all the prices and stuff is about to go up because everybody got to take a way longer route but anyways i was gonna say he said the houthis that might be out there fighting for our cause too who know you know what i'm saying we don't know some of these we don't know who a saint who ain't a saint so peace to everybody who out there but no peace to the wicked the only thing we say to them is repent that they might live you know what I mean? Let's, uh, where we leave off last week? Ezekiel. Well, we was going to get into Ezekiel, but we was reading a little bit of Daniel. Yeah, we looked at, uh, we looked at, uh, Daniel, right? Where we leave off on Daniel 4? Probably left off on Daniel 4, right? Where Daniel, Daniel was talking to, um, Daniel was, or not Daniel was talking to, Nebuchadnezzar wrote, uh in daniel's book right and he wrote about how he had a dream and how the dream ended up being him being brought low so you remember at the by the end of it nebuchadnezzar who ran the world right who the most high god called him the king of kings who he he felt like people should bow down to him and if they don't bow down to him he gonna throw them in a fire right we talked about how uh the prophecy of isaiah chapter 14 called nebuchadnezzar lucifer Right. And we all used to think Lucifer was who? Who we used to think Lucifer was? The devil. That's what we used to think he was. But what did we learn? Who did we learn he was last week? No, not necessarily the testimony, but who, who was he actually? Nebuchadnezzar, right? The king of Babylon is who Lucifer is, right? So we learned that we've been taught lies all our life, talking about Lucifer is the devil. That's not true, right? Satan is the devil. The devil is the devil. The old serpent is the devil. And the great dragon is the devil. Right? All those are the devil. The Lucifer, that's just Nebuchadnezzar. That's the, the ancient king of Babylon. Right? So the Most High God set him up, gave him authority. And then when his pride got too high, Most High God brought him low. You show everybody your head? Take your thing off. Tell him what you're dealing with. That boy nice out here in these streets. Hey, why y'all laughing? I'm gonna shave your head off tomorrow. Who got their head shaved? Uh, uh, my boy Andre. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. He out here with the baldy, looking like Jordan, light skin Jordan. <laughs> you know what I mean? That boy, nice too. And he gonna knock all y'all out. And I'm gonna let him afterwards. So listen, uh, we gonna pick up this week with Ezekiel. We are gonna do Ezekiel chapter uh, Ezekiel chapter one. It's Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1. Don't worry, I got every one of them for you. The hard eye crooked. That boy can't look, look straight for his life. Who else laughed? 
Oh, David. Now it came to pass in the 13th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river Kiber, that were the, that the heavens were opened up and I saw visions of God. Right. So this is Ezekiel chapter one, verse one. So now you have uh, Ezekiel. Let's read it again, because I don't think the people heard you. It's Ezekiel chapter one, verse one. But watch, watch what he say about Ezekiel. Right. Watch what Ezekiel say about himself, rather. In the 13th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives. By the he was among who? The captives. So Ezekiel was taken captive, right? He was taken and captured by uh, uh, the king of Babylon too, right? So now he was among the captives. Jeremiah stayed in, uh, in Israel. He stayed in Judah, right? Daniel got taken into Babylon. So now, just like that, Ezekiel got taken also. He's in a place called, what is it, Keeper? Keeper, by the river Keeper. I think Daniel. Right, he by the river Keeper. He's Daniel among the captives. Watch what the book say about him, though. Yeah, Daniel probably in the capital city. I think Ezekiel just in some regular old spot or something. Right. He didn't get, take, he didn't get taken with the royalty. Yeah. Right, Daniel got taken with the royalty. Ezekiel, though, let's see who Ezekiel is. Watch this. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity. The word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Kiber. River mm -hmm. Kiber. And the hand of the Lord was there upon him. And I, now I said Ezekiel the what? To the priest. So Ezekiel, you remember we talked about Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a priest also. To be a priest, you got to be a son of who? No. 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 You got to be a son of Aaron, right? So you remember Aaron was Moses' brother, right? So you have to be a son of Aaron to be a priest. So Jeremiah was a priest, and Ezekiel is also a priest. So it said Ezekiel the priest. What else? And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, and a great look, cloud. So look, Ezekiel looking, he by the river Keeper, he looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of, when the book say whirlwind, what is it talking about? Tornado. They're talking about a little dust bunny. That, you know what I'm saying? Do that? No, they're talking about a tornado. Right? That boy looked up and a tornado came out of what? That thing north. came from the north. Right? So keep coming. What happened? And a great cloud and fire enfolding itself and a brightness was about it. And out of the mist thereof, as the color of amber, out of the mist of the fire. Mm -hmm. Also out of the mist thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this right. So look, he see a tornado and it's fire. It's like the fire is unfolding of itself. Right. So y'all probably ain't never seen like a big explosion. But when you see a big old explosion, it looked like the fire is like coming out and unfolding. Like it just it starts small and it just unfolds and keep getting bigger and bigger. So that's what he's looking at. It's a tornado and it's clouds and then it's fire that's just unfolding in the tornado and around the tornado. And then he keep looking and he like. I see four living creatures. So there's four creatures there that look like they alive. He didn't say people. He said creatures. So that means I ain't never seen nothing like this before. It looked like it's alive, but I've never seen anything like this before. He's going to try to describe it to us. Watch this. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. Look, when you look at them, they look like a man. But what else? And everyone had four faces. But look. It's a man, but we got one face, right? I look at male beautiful face, one face, right? I look at Andre beautiful face, one face, right? You can't see it because he got the thing, but one face, right? But then imagine male Andre, King, and Zahar face all in one. That's four faces, right? So it's like I turn this way, you see this face. I turn this way, you see this face. I turn this way, you see this face. I got four faces on my head, right? This is what this guy is seeing. Right. So Ezekiel looking like, so I ain't never seen nothing like this, but it looked like it's alive. It's a creature. Right. It looked like a man, but he got four faces. Keep going. Watch this. And everyone had four wings. OK. Then he had four wings. Watch this. And their feet were straight feet and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. So then they feet. We, anybody ever seen? Uh, when they say calf, you ever seen like 
a cow's hind legs, the back legs of a cow. You never seen the back legs of a cow? So if you look at the back legs of a cow, right? What's going to happen is they leg going to be pretty straight down. Like the leg part, it's just going to be straight like little sticks. You know what I'm saying? Like they thighs and all that is big. You know what I'm saying? But you get to the legs, it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's pretty straight, right? So the straight legs, right? And then he said, he said, what else after that, after the straight legs? And their feet were straight feet. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. Right? So then it was like calf's feet. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. Right? So then they skin sparkled like the color of burned brass. What does that look like? What? That's like that's like our skin if it shined. Right? When they say brass, it's really talking about copper. But it's like Imagine copper, but it has a glow on it. Right? So he's like, they skin got a glow, and it's like it's black people's skin, but it got a glow. Right? Keep going, watch this. I mean, probably the closest thing you're gonna get to it is probably, you know what I'm saying? My skin. And they had trying to say hands. I'm oily. Keep going, they what had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides. And they okay, so on, had their faces. on their sides, they had hands of a man, right? Keep going. And they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another, and they turned not when they went. And they went everyone straight forward. As for so the what they're saying is their wings was touching, right? So it's four of them, right? Their wings are touching. So it's like I got a wing right here, and then my partner got a wing up here, and our wings are like touching and meeting at the top like this. And then at the bottom, our wings is meeting at the bottom. You know what I'm saying? So I got a wing up here and a wing up there, right? So kind of imagine like that. It's all four of us standing next to each other, right? So we all lined up. And when we lined up, get that bottle for them. So when we, we all lined up like this, it's saying they not turning like this. They all moving in unison, going straight forward is what he described, right? So they not like turning and, and they going it. No, we all lined up and we just moving straight forward like this. Right, keep going. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side. So look, look, this is the four, the four faces. They had the face of a man, and then what? The face of a lion on the right side, and they four on the right the side, it was ox. the face of a lion. Then what? And they four had the face of an ox on the left side. An ox on, on the left side. And they four also had the face of an eagle. And then the eagle. So these are all four of their faces. You have to think about this. And you have to say, if you saw this, what would you think? You've never heard nothing described like this. You never, you've never seen this before. These are living creatures. You see they moving. They moving at you. It's a bunch of fire. It's a tornado. It's clouds. You by the river Kibar, right? The fire is unfolding on itself. You see these living creatures. They got four wings, four faces, hands down to their side. They moving forward. They ain't turning no bit. They all in alignment. You got to be looking at, I don't know what's about to happen, right? Watch this. Keep going. So thus were their faces and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of everyone were joined one to another and two covered their bodies. Mm -hmm. They went everyone straight forward, whether the spirit were wherever, wherever the spirit was to go, they went and they mm -hmm. turned not when they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire and like the appearance of lamps. It went up and down among the living creatures and the fire was bright and out of the fire went forth lightning. Keep going. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Mm hmm. These boys are fast, beheld, right? Keep going. Now, as I beheld the living creatures, behold, one will upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. The appearance. He said, "What now?" Will. He said, "He beheld what?" One will. He he beheld a will. I want y'all to think about what this is, right? You see these creatures; they got four faces. 
eagles and darn ox and darn lion and a human face, right? All in one. Two wings trying to cover their body with one wing, hands down to their sides. They got legs like it's a calf, like a cow, right? Or feet like a cow, right? They coming right at you, moving. Wherever the spirit go, they go, but they don't turn to the side. Them boys just moving. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they move fast. He said it's like a, it's like the appearance of lightning, right? And the boys is glowing. They like coals. They just moving around. Wherever the spirit go, they go. Boom, boom, boom. Then he said, then I saw a wheel, right? So picture a wheel, right? Now let's imagine. Let's let's hear. Let him describe the wheel. What happened on the wheel? The appearance of the wheels in their work was like unto the color of a barrel, and they four had one likeness. Their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Right? So it would look it looked like it was a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Right? So imagine one wheel and another wheel around that wheel. Right? That's what they that's what he's looking at. And what else he see? And when they went, they went upon their four sides and they turned not when they went. As for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful. And their rings were full of eyes round about them four. So right. They, so then the, the ring around the wheels looked like it had eyes all over. it. Right. What else? And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them. And when the living creatures were lift up from the earth, the wheels were lift up. Where, whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went. There was their spirit to go, and the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. When those so, went, so now the wheel is moving with them, right? So they go. The wheels moving. The wheels moving. They say the wheel was on the side, right? So you go. If somebody saw that, what you think they're gonna say? You looking, it looked like it's a wheel and then a wheel inside of it and then a ring around that and the rings got eyes all over them, right? It looked like it got eyes all over it. And that thing is just moving around like this. Wherever the spirit go, it go. And you got these four creatures. I ain't never seen no creatures like this. Like, I've never seen nothing like it. They got faces all over the place and they moving and moving and moving. You got this wheel moving, 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 moving. What do you think you're going to look like? What do you think going to look like? I'm looking for something that I can kind of. Um, that's a circle. Huh? Oh, Saturn? Yeah, you might think whatever it is is from Saturn. That's what you're going to think. You're going to look at that and be like, that is a you. If we saw something like that today, 1,000%, somebody got their phone out and they saying, I caught a UFO. And these are aliens. Look at these things. I've never seen nothing like this in my life. Look at them moving around. Zoop, 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 zoop. You know what I'm saying? You looking, you recording. A lot of people gonna call it an alien, right? What is an alien? What is it called when somebody is in this country, but really they belong in another country? Don't we call them illegal? Or we used to. That's offensive now. But you used to call them. Ain't that crazy? How is a how is offensive to be called an illegal alien when you illegally here? That's crazy. I got to worry about what's offense. That's crazy to me. But anyways, you ain't supposed to call them illegal aliens. But they were called aliens. Why would we call people that's from Earth aliens? Because they're not from here. They don't belong. Because they're not from America. If you in America, you're not from America and you're here illegally, we would call you an illegal alien. That means alien doesn't mean a green guy with eyes. Alien means something that is not from here. Y'all stop. It means something that is not from here. Right? So when you think of it that way, anything that's not from Earth is an alien. In that context. Mayala, get back, please. I'm going to hit the camera. Right? Anything that's not from here is an alien, technically. So in the book, we don't use the word alien. We use the word celestial, right? Celestial is the same concept. It's something from the heavens. We say heavens in the book. Here we would say what? Out of space. 
we might say sky or outer space. Right. So what we call heavens, the book would call outer space. Vice versa. Anybody? Let's prove that out. Go to Genesis chapter one. Genesis chapter one. This is where all the flat earth people go wrong because they be trying to stretch the book to make it prove their point. But this is Genesis chapter one. Genesis chapter one, verse one. Watch the book say. In the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. That's right. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of, of the deep. So you got to picture it. I don't want y'all to picture it like a globe view. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times when we when we read this, we picture in a globe, right? We picture in the, the Google Earth that zoomed all the way out, and you got that thing spinning, and it's like it's all darkness. And then all of a sudden, there was water and deep. I don't want you to picture that. I want you to picture as if, you you just floating right above this street right here. Everything gets taken away. It's pitch black, right? Pitch black. On the floor. And then what happened in the beginning? What? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So then, then you hear something around you, but you don't see nothing because it's still dark, right? Then watch this. And the earth was without form and void. Right? Yeah. You You still don't know because you can't see nothing. But he's telling you the earth is without form and it's void. What void mean? Empty. It's empty. It ain't nothing on earth. Right? Keep going. Watch this. The darkness was upon the face of the deep. The spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Right? So now you see light. And when you see the light, the light come on. You just floating. And you looking at water beneath you. And when you look forward. You look as far as you can see in this water. It's like you just stand in the middle of the ocean. Ain't no land around. That's all you see. Right. So it's light and you just stand in the middle of the ocean. And everywhere you look, it's just water, water, water. Then what else happened? And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Right. And the wait, I'm sorry. Hold on. Um, and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So you still standing there, it get light, and then it got dark again. And then he, most high God told you, all right, that was the first day. Let's see what happened now. God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. So look, it's water. No matter where you see it, it's water, right? And then he, God said, let there be what? Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. The firmament is a space. That's all that means. A lot of people are going to try to tell you the firmament, you know what I'm saying? The Elon Musk can't get his rockets out of the earth because a firmament is right there. They make you believe like a firmament means something hard or something solid or anything like that. That's not what the word means. The word just is talking about a space, right? So what we call outer space, right? Really just firmament. Because the most high God said, it's a bunch of water right here. Everywhere you look is water. He said, okay, we'll put a space in between this water and more water. So what that means is somewhere way out there, there was water. There was a whole bunch of water, right? And maybe still is, right? But for sure, there used to be a whole bunch of water way out of space. So in between the water, there's water way out here and there's water here, right? So then keep going, watch this. God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And what happened? God called the firmament heaven. He called what? The firmament heaven. So what is the firmament called? Heaven. So every time we read the book and it say heaven, what is it talking about? Uh, space above. Huh? Sky or the space above. That's not what the book just said, right? The book just said God called the firmament what? Heaven. So every time we read and we see firmament, what are we really seeing? I mean, every time we read and we see heaven, what are we really seeing? The space. Firmament. 
right? A lot of times people will confuse us and try to say, oh, the firmament is this and the firmament is this. But every time the book tells you something about the fowls of the heaven, what is it saying? The fowls of the firmament. When they say that the fowls flew through the heavens, what is it saying? The fowls flew through the firmament. Right. So when they get to telling you that Elon Musk rocket and NASA rocket can't go through the firmament, well, how the birds go through it? Right. I don't care if you say the world is flat. You can say it flat. Just don't lie on the book when you say it. Right. So we look at it and we're dealing with a firmament. The firmament is really just space. So when we think about it and we say, oh, man, it looked like those aliens are from outer space. It's no different from when the book says something is celestial, right? You have terrestrial beings, which means the extraterrestrial. You ever heard of ET? Extraterrestrial. That just means that it's outside of Earth. Extraterrestrial, right? Then you have the celestial beings. The celestial beings just means the same thing as extraterrestrial. Technically, celestial means it's from the heavens or from the firmament or from space, right? From the area above, the sky, when you look up, whatever's out there, that's where it's from. It's not from here, right? So that's what Ezekiel is seeing. Let's turn back to Ezekiel. That's what Ezekiel is seeing. He's seeing stuff that don't look like it's from earth. I want to drive that home because we get stuck into this. We've been trained to think of stuff as aliens as we see aliens. But understand that anybody that is not from earth is an alien. Right. In the literal sense of the word. So when you see when we talk about angels, we look at angels like it's different from aliens. But no, if an angel came from above. And came down, guess what that is? That's an alien. You're not from here. No different as the Mexican that crime over the border is an alien. No different from the European that hop on the ship, ship and sneak, sneak in here. That's an alien. It don't matter what type of alien you are. Right. You're an alien. So you have fallen angels. Right. You have you have um, you have uh, messengers of the most high God. Right. The watchers and you have cherubim. These are all different types of of celestial beings that are described in this book. Right. Spirits, all types of spirits, all described in this book. And now Ezekiel has a chance to see one as he's becoming a prophet, right? The most high God gave him this vision and he's trying to tell it the best he can. Let's keep going. Watch this. What them boys doing? <laughs> so the said, so get to the point. Is the world round or flat? <laughs> I ain't, I don't know. I can't tell you, Sister Pamela. I'm just going to tell you what the book say. The book don't say it's round and the book don't say it's flat. The book yeah, speaks like, from the perspective of a man. I when was, it's telling I, you about the world, it's, it's telling you about, it's, te it's just telling you about if you were standing here looking on the land, when you look out, this is what you're going to see. That's, that's, that's what the book is describing. The book is not describing it from Google Earth. You know what I'm saying? It's not describing it. So it's not going to give you this zoomed out view of what it is. So I don't care if it's round or flat. I'm happy if anybody can prove it. But don't lie on the book when you try to prove it. Either way, right? Either way. Because there's some people that are trying to prove that it's round. They lying on the book too. Well, you know, when the book says sphere, it's talking about a globe. That's a lie. That's not what that word means. It don't mean girl, globe. It means circle. That's what it is. So you could have a flat circle. Still could be flat. Just because the book says it's a circle. The book do say the world's a circle, right? But it don't say it's a... Sit down, please. <laughs> right? But it don't say... uh. It don't say that it's uh it's a globe. Yeah, it being flat don't make sense to me, but like I said, like whether it is or isn't, like I don't care. Like that's not don't matter. Yeah, that's you know not what I'm saying? Don't matter. It don't matter unless you can prove it with the book. If you if you can prove it with the book that is one way or the other, then it matter. Because the book say it. But most of y'all to try to prove it, either way, you try to prove it. Most of y'all to try to prove it, you lying on the book. And that ain't gonna work with me. You know what I'm saying? saying? You can't lie on the book. Knowing that ain't gonna help me obey God more, you know what I mean? Like, unless it's in the book. If it's in the book, it's in the book. I don't care how insignificant or significant it is. My problem is these boys ain't got it in the book. That's it. So it's like, don't use the book. You can have. We got theories all day long about all types of stuff. I don't care about no theories. We can have theories, but don't bring the book into it. 
You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. Just don't bring the book into it. You get to bring the book into it. Now you lying. Right? Now I gotta now I gotta check you out. This is uh this is uh Ezekiel where we leave off. Verse Ezekiel chapter one. Verse twenty two. Verse twenty two. And the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was as And the what do you of, see? The likeness of a what? Of the firmament. So now what you will try to hear, what you gonna what 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 you will hear people say here is that this is referring to the same firmament. It's not. Because what is the firmament called? Heaven. When we talk about the firmament, we call it heaven. Now it's saying it's the likeness of a firmament. Right? So it looks like the firmament is what he's saying. Right? And what else? Upon the heads of the living creature was as the color of the terrible crystal. Mm-hmm. And stretched forth over their heads above. And under the firmament. So over their heads, right? It looked like the sky. So right over their heads is something that just looked like it's it's blue like the sky. It's like the clear blue sky right over their head, right? Keep going. Stretch forth over their heads above, and under the firmament were their wings straight, the one mm -hmm. toward the other. Everyone had two which covered on his on this side, and everyone had two which covered on that side their bodies. And when they went, I heard the noise of their wings like the noise of great waters, as a voice of the Almighty, and the voice of speech as the noise of a host. When they stood, they let down their wings. Right. So imagine when he said a, a, a voice of, of a host, imagine like. Oh. You ever seen uh you ever seen like a choir? And a choir singing is like it's like you got a choir at your school. So when a real, you know what I'm saying, grown woman or grown man choir sing, like you could like that thing like vibrate, you know what I'm saying? And you could hear it and everybody's voice is like all on top of it. So it's like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Just like a, a huge vibration. He's saying that's what these wings sound like. So the wings is flapping so hard and fast that it's like you know what I'm saying? You can hear it throughout the, the throughout the land where he is. So he said that thing sound like a whole bunch of people talking at once. Right? It's how it sounds when it's wing, the, they wings is flapping. Keep going. And when they stood and had let and when they stood and had let down their wings and above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the mm -hmm. likeness of the throne was the likeness this has the appearance of a man above upon it. So look, now they he gets to see and he looking and he like, whoa, whoa, above them is somebody. So they got this thing above their head. It's like the clear blue sky. It looked like it looked like heaven. It's like heaven. Right. In other words, it's like the sky. Right. And it's clear blue. And then above that is something that looked like a throne. So if if we if we had to kind of depict this in a movie, imagine it like um, imagine it like uh, if y'all saw the last Marvel movie, the Marvels, right? And they had like a gap in the um in the universe or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And then above that, you could kind of see the other universe right above it, right? So imagine something like that. It's like these things flying around, but above, right above them. It's like a window open into something else. And that, that window kind of looked like a clear blue space. And it's just right above their head. And wherever they move, it moves. And then the wheel is moving with them too. At this point, you see some craziness like this. Now you're thinking, this is a Marvel movie. This is, this is darn, this is darn, we're under attack. Right? So he looking at this thing and he looking like, but that thing looked like a throne on top of it. And then on the throne is something that looked like a man. This is his description. Read it again. Watch this. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon mm -hmm. the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. He's not saying it is a man. He's saying it, that thing, that, that thing looks mighty like a man. You know what I'm saying? Like it looks similar to a human being. Right? So he said, it's the appearance of a man. Watch this. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within, from the appearance of his loins even upward, 
and from the appearance of his loins, even downward, I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire. Mm -hmm. And it had brightness round about, and the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain. So was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance. Right, so the round about is like a rainbow around. Y'all stop playing. Round about is like a rainbow around, right? And then he had, he, you know what I'm saying? It was like the appearance of fire from his waist down. And from the waist up, he, he had like a bright orange type color, right? So he had a, just a strong glow. And then around him, a rainbow type color, like all the colors around him, right? Keep going. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face and I heard right? a voice of one that spoke. So look, this whole time he watching it go down. This thing moving. Oh, it's four of them creatures. Oh, and the tornado and the smoke. And then all of a sudden the cloud. And then the fire is unfolding on itself. He watching it. Oh, then the wheel. Look at the wheel. Okay. Oh, and you got a firmament above. What's up all that firmament? Window into it. Oh, wait. And now I see a throne. What's on top of the throne? After that, after he saw what was on top of that throne, what'd he do? This was, this is the likeness of the glory of Yahuwah. When I saw it, I fell upon my face. And I heard a voice. after that, look, he was watching the whole time. And then all of a sudden he saw that and he said, I fell upon my face. Right? Fell upon my face. Oh, we got grab y'all. Let's see if y'all remember this. Grab uh Isaiah chapter six. And mm -hmm. T help me out with what verse I want. I want to say I probably want verse 12, but that might be a little too far. It's Isaiah chapter six, verse. We're going to see, but maybe verse 12. And then we're coming right back to Ezekiel. But I just want to see, I want to see, I want to show y'all some similarities. Uh, you might want like verse one. Not one. I don't want one. I don't want to read the whole thing. Yeah. I just want to get to the point where he fell out. Okay. We want to like uh, verse five. That early? Yeah, he said, "Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips." Oh, I didn't realize it was that early. All right, so yeah, Isaiah chapter six, verse five. Watch this. Then I said, "Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone." Well, actually, give me verse four. Watch this. And the post of the door moved as the voice of him that cried. And all right, so go ahead and give me verse one. <laughs> I told you that thing right at the beginning. In the year that Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne. Mm -hmm. I lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With two mm -hmm. he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he float. He did fly. Right? Don't this sound familiar? It's almost like what Ezekiel talking about. Different amount of wings. These only have four. Now Isaiah describing something that got six. Right? But watch this. Keep going. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is Yahuwah of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Mm -hmm. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Mm -hmm. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell mm -hmm. in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the king, Yahuwah mm -hmm. of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. That's another one right there, like, you know, y'all sure is king and God, but, you know. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, lo, this has touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, here I am, send me. And he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not. You see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be and convert and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. The Lord have removed men far away, and there be great forsaken, there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. But yet in it shall be a tent 
and shall and it shall return and shall be eaten as the as the teal tree as an oak whose substance is in them when they cast their leaves so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof go back to verse five i feel like i missed it then said i woe is me for i am undone because i'm a man of unclean lips and i dwell in a, of a, in a people in the midst of a people of unclean lips for my eyes have seen the king the lord of hosts you talking about like when uh somebody else saw the same thing and then god touched him and he like no, i feel like is it verse four did we miss it no. or am i just tripping no like give me give me, give me give me verse three and one cried unto another and said holy 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 is the lord of hosts the earth is full of his glory it's another place keep going then said i woe is me for i'm undone because i'm a man of unclean lips and i dwell in the midst of a people with unclean lips for my eyes have seen the king the lord of hosts then flew one of the seraphim unto me having the coal in his hand which hey he had taken out of the tongues of the altar and he laid it upon my mouth and said lo this has touched thy lips thy iniquity is taken away and thy sin purged hmm. <laughs> You talking, it's another place where another prophet saw the same thing and they touched him and he was able to stand up, but I forget who it nah, was. that's Daniel. But yeah, I thought I thought he uh that was the, we read to the end of the chapter? Yeah. Yeah, I thought he uh thought he fell out. Now Daniel fell out and Ezekiel fell out. I think another one did too. Okay, well let's jump back over uh to Ezekiel. Yeah, that's my bad. I thought I thought he fell out too. But you can see that he saw the seraphims. That's another one, right? The cherubims, the seraphim, the uh, what the book would call the messengers, right? Or the angels. Um, and then you also have watchers and fallen angels. Ezekiel chapter one, what verse we leave off on? Uh, 28. Well, we read Ezekiel the whole chapter thing. one, 28. We, we read the whole thing. Oh, that's, that's all of chapter one. So let's yeah. go to chapter two. It's Ezekiel chapter two, verse one. And he said unto me, so that was his introduction to, to Yah, right? Yah gave him this vision, right? He showed him something. After he saw it, he fell out. So this is chapter two. It continues. And he said unto me, son of man, stand upon thy feet and I will speak unto thee. And the mm -hmm. spirit entered into me when I, when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet that I heard. Right, so him. he couldn't stand. The spirit had to enter into him and stand him up. So the spirit got into it, gave him strength, and he stood up. What else happened? And then I heard him that spake unto me, and he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to a children of Israel, to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. But they That's are right. So he said, I'm sending you to your people. They rebelled against me. They transgressed against me unto this day. What's the state of our people right now? Same thing. Well, yeah, right now, definitely right now. But I mean, in Ezekiel's day, as he's getting this me message, what was the state of our people? Oh, they was getting taken away. Disobedient rebellion and in captivity, right? So we in captivity, there's some people in the land and they being, you know what I'm saying, they being subjugated to the, the, the king of Babylon, right? So he's hearing this and he's saying, I'm sending you on to this rebellious people. Ezekiel's looking at it like, right, we in a messed up position. This is probably why we in a messed up position. I just want y'all to think about it, how Ezekiel would be hearing it right now. Watch this. Keep going. For they are imputed children and stiff, stiff hearted. I do send thee unto them and thou shalt say unto them, thus says Yahuwah God. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are rebellious house, yet shall know that there has been a prophet among them. And That's you, right. son of man. Be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words. Though, though, though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks. Though they be a rebellious house, thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. But right, thou, so he's telling them, don't be scared of these people. They're going to say some stuff. These boys is like scorpions and like thorns. Right, you gonna go, and they gonna say some stuff against you, but just make sure you say my word. He's telling you, he's like, don't. I get it. These people gonna be against you. 
They're going to talk about you. They're going to make you feel bad. They're going to call you names. But guess what? That don't stop you from saying my word. It's what he's telling Ezekiel. He telling the, he's preparing Ezekiel for a reason. Right? He's, he's making sure he understands. I'm not telling you this is going to be a cakewalk. I'm not telling you that people are going to come up to you and bow down to you and tell you you're such a great man and you're so wise. He's telling me, I'm not. That's not the expectation I'm trying to give you. It's about to be rough. It's about to be painful. It's about to hurt. Nevertheless, don't make no excuse. You keep saying what my word tell you to say. Watch this. Keep going. But thou son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not rebellious like the rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. So look, a hand was sent unto him. So just imagine a hand coming up to him, right? And then that hand had the roll of a book, so it had a scroll in it, right? A bunch of a bunch of a bunch of paper, you know what I'm saying, with words written on it. And then what happened after that? And the and he spread it before me, and it was written. right. So then a book got opened up in front of him. Watch this. And it was written within and without. And there was so written there. On the, on the pages of the book, on both sides, and on the outside, it was stuff written all over it. On every part of the paper, front and back, everything has something written on it, right? He opened it up, and he handed it to him like this. Watch what happened. And there was written there in lamentations and mourning and woe. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, Eat that thou findest. Eat this roll and go speak to the house of Israel. Watch this. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with the roll that I give thee. Then did so I he gave him this book. He opened it up and then he put it in his mouth and he had to eat it. So he ate the roll. He ate the book. Now watch this. And it was Remember, this is mouth. a vision. The Most High God has given him a vision, right? Watch this. And it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. So in his mouth, when he is eating it, he ate the book. And he's like, and when he ate it, he's like, oh, this thing's sweet. It tastes like honey. He's like, hmm, this. Imagine having a dream like this. Like you having a dream. It's like somebody give you a hand, come up and say, eat. And then you eat the book. And you're like, I don't want to eat the book, but I eat the book. And you're like, actually, that ain't bad. Thing tastes like honey. You know what I'm saying? So now you eating it. You know, like, mm, 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 no, give me some more. Mm, 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 you eating the book. Then watch what happened next. And he said unto me, son of man, go get thee into the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. Now so he's telling you, go out and go speak my word to your people. And he's reminding you, you're not, you're not going to a people of a strange speech. They speak your same language. These are your people, right? But watch what he say. Watch what he prepare. Just under, I want y'all to pay attention to how God is preparing him, right? Why is God choosing to say these things to him? It's a reason for it, right? Keep going. Not too many people of a strange speech and of a hard language whose words you cannot understand. Surely, had I sent thee unto them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel... So he's telling you, look, if I sent you to people that didn't understand your language, they would listen to you. I want y'all to conceptualize that because there's a couple messages in that. The one message is your people is more rebellious than these other people. Your people are so used to God that you take them for granted. Right? Because these other people ain't never seen a prophet. They ain't never seen nothing like this. Right? They'll mess around and turn around because they ain't got nothing in their history to pull from. But we didn't have exodus right we didn't have darn darn moses bringing us in splitting the darn sea leading us through the wilderness we didn't have us giving power to take over giants joshua stopping the, the, the sun in the middle of the day and holding it there for a full day right we had like all these amazing things that are that have happened so we kind of spoiled we can pull back in our history and be like oh yeah that's like what moses said so it don't have the same shock factor for us so now the Most High God is sending the message like these Gentiles, had you been going to these Gentiles to speak another language, they probably would listen to you. Right? But because you're going to your people, they're not going to listen. But what's the other message? Isn't the other message that 
if I wanted to go save these Gentiles, I know what it takes. Yet the Most High God still chose, in many cases, not to do that. He knows that if he sent Ezekiel to one of these nations that don't speak his language, he could have turned all those people to God. Right? Nevertheless, he didn't send Ezekiel there. He sent him to us still, knowing that we were going to be rebellious to him and that it wasn't going to work. So we have to conceptualize that, too, that the most high God do what he want to do. And it ain't like a mistake. It ain't like it ain't like, oh, I wish I could get these people to believe. I wish I wish I could send somebody. No, the most high God know what each one of us needs for us to be convinced and for us to change and for us to turn away. But that's not what the most high God is doing. He's not doing it based off of what based based off of what we need. He based off of what is right. So he lay it in front of us and he say, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get the word. You're going to get this experience. Some people are going to get different experiences. But for you, this is what's right. This is enough for you to turn. Now you got to go the extra mile. You got to put in the effort. A lot of people get the idea of it's God's fault because why would he let my grandma die if he loved us? That ain't how it works. That ain't how it works. Because we about to see some stuff with Ezekiel. Right. And this is a man that's obedient to him, the man that served him in the priesthood and a man that is his prophet. And most High God is about to put Ezekiel through the ringer. And that's why he's preparing him this way. That's why he's telling them all these things, because he knows that it's something very difficult in front of Ezekiel. And if he don't say all this stuff to him, Ezekiel might give up. Keep going. Watch this. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-headed, hard-hearted. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads, as an ad adamant harder than flint have I right. made thy forehead. So he said, I make your face as strong against their face. In other words, these people is hard-headed against me. I'm going to make you hard-headed for me. Right? So what that means is when we, when we talk about somebody that's hard-headed, they just don't listen. I keep trying to tell you to do the right thing. I keep trying to tell you which way to go. I keep trying to tell you stay out of trouble. I keep trying to tell you all these things. And guess what? Yo, but keep doing what you want to do. You keep doing the same thing. You keep getting in trouble. Just hard headed. Right. That's what we say when we say hard headed. But what he's saying is I'm going to make your face hard against theirs, just like theirs is hard against yours. So what he's saying is they're going to be telling you stop talking to us about God. You know, that stuff ain't real. You know this, that, and the other. You a false prophet. Everything to convince us to stop obeying God. He said, just like they hard-headed to obey me, I'm going to make you hard-headed to disobey me. So you're going to make sure that you always obedient to me. And it don't matter what nobody say, they can't change what you think. Because that's exactly how they are. That when we talk to them, we can't change. It don't matter what I say. It don't matter how much word I preach. No matter what I show you, no matter what I teach you, no matter what 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 miracle happened, people still going to do what they want to do. And guess what got to happen? Got to stay consistent either way. Can't break. Right. Because that's what was given to us. Right. For Ezekiel, his calling was different. He got to stay consistent with going out and preaching word. I mean, not just preaching, giving prophecy and giving word to these people. Word that's going to get his butt beat up and exercise and all that stuff. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Moreover, he said unto me, son of, son of man, all thy words that I speak shall, I shall speak unto thee, receive in thy heart and hear what he is, and go. Get thee to them of the captivity, unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them, and tell them, thus says you who are God, whether they will hear or whether they will bear. Then the spirit took me up and I heard behind me a voice as a great rushing saying, blessed be the glory of Yahuwah from his place. I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another and the noise of the wheels over against them and the noise of a great rushing. For the spirit lifted me up and took me away and I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit. But the hand of Yahuwah was strong upon me. So notice that the spirit lifted him up and it took him away. And then he went in what? Bitterness. Very important. Because when he ate the when he ate the, the roll, it was sweet like honey. Right? When he ate the book in his mouth, it was sweet like honey. 
by the end of it, he was sent away in what? Bitterness. Bitterness. Keep keep that in mind because one day wasn't we're gonna that, get the revelations uh, and it's gonna that, all yeah. come together. Yeah, I was, gonna say, huh? I was gonna say, wasn't that John that uh in uh revelations he ate it and it wasn't honey, it was like it was like wormwood. That's right. Yeah, keep going. Then I came to them of the captivity in Tel Aviv that dwelt by the river of Kiber, and I said, and I sat where they sat and rem and remained there, astonished among them seven days. And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of Yahuwah came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, he said, I made you a watchman unto the house of Israel. Watch this. True. What is a watchman? What does a watchman do? They watch for the they watch for the attack. So a watchman usually would be like on a tower or on the top of the wall, right? And he kind of just sitting there. Sometimes he with somebody else, they playing cards or something. It's like, yeah, yeah. Like, no, nah, man, I declare war. You know what I'm saying? Ain't that ain't that what the I declare war? Yeah, man. You kids play that anymore? I declare war. You ain't never played I declare war in your war. I declare you ever play I declare war? No, that's dumb. That's dumb war. Ain't I declare war a card game? Yes. I was about to say, I ain't going crazy. No, I declare war. You you throw it out. How you play I declare? I can't even remember. The biggest you throw card, it out the in the card, in the biggest card, card win, right? Yeah. And all you you can't choose your card, you just flip it out. And if you flip it out and I play a queen and you play a king, that's your boom, you take it. It's a simple game, you know what I'm saying? But as a kid, it was your introduction in the cards. Right? Mm -hmm. So, anyways, they sitting on the top of the wall. They playing spades. You know what I'm saying? Y'all play spades, y'all don't play spades. Y'all don't, don't no, I can't I can't play with these darn kids. So anyway, they, they playing a card game. They playing Thumb War, whatever y'all play, right? And they sitting there playing, and then their job is to keep watch. So they playing, they playing cards. Like, oh, man, I got you that time, boy. You know what I'm saying? That's a good one. I got Hey, sit y'all butts down. So look, I got you that time, boy. You know what I'm saying? I got you. Okay, good, 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 good. Oh, you got me. And all of a sudden, they hear the chariots and the horses coming. They looking like, who is that? That boy get up, and he grab his horn. He looking like, no, that's the real deal. They coming for us. Then he got to blow the horn and he got to warn everybody within the walls. Woo! They coming. Woo! Sound the alarms. Everybody know if you fighting in a war, go get your equipment, go get your weapons. We got to fight. If you women, children, go high, get to a safe place. It's about to go down. It's about to get real right now. So that's the job of a watchman, right? A watchman is supposed to look out for all the people and tell them if danger is coming, you have to at least know. So this is what y'all uh, is about to explain to Ezekiel. Watch this. He said, I've made you a watchman to Israel. Son of man, I've made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When He's I say supposed to the give them warning for Yah. Watch this. When I say unto the wicked, you shall surely die, and you gave us him not warning, nor spoke to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at your hand. Right? So what he's telling them is, Ezekiel, I made you a watchman, so now if I tell you this guy is wicked, and you need to warn him to turn from his wicked ways, and you fail to warn him, you don't go to him and be like, yo, most our God told me you're wicked, you need to turn from your ways. He said, that man, he going to die now, right? Make no mistake. He going to die and he going to be punished for his sin. However, I'm going to require it at your hand. So in other words, it's going to be Ezekiel's fault because he never told this man, the most high God said, yo, you sinned. You was you were supposed to turn away from your stuff, right? He said, because you never told him, that man, that, that man death is on you. That's your fault, right? Keep going. Watch this. Yeah. If thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But you have delivered your soul. Right? So now he said, but if you tell him, even if he don't listen to you, you saved yourself. That ain't on you no more. It's important that we understand this, because although Ezekiel's job is different from ours, right? Ezekiel has a job of a prophet, right? But what the concept is teaching us is, God don't care about the response or the outcome. He's not like we care about that stuff. We care about, oh, did it work or did it not work? Or did I get what I thought was going to happen? That's what we that, that's what we care about. He don't care about that. He don't care if it's one person in this room while I'm teaching or if it's 70 people in the room while I'm teaching 
or 70,000 people in the stadium. That part he don't care about. He don't care who responds to it. He don't care if I sit all the kids down, talk to him like, hey, kids, you guys should do this, that, and the other, and none of them listen, and they all go off and go to do their own thing. And he don't care if they all listen. It doesn't matter. The goal is do what you are supposed to do. So it doesn't matter. All of our jobs is going to be different, right? Our jobs are going to be obedience to the word of the most high God, turning away from sin. Which sins? What sin do we turn away from? Yeah. All of them, right? But give oh, me some. Mm -hmm. Cussing. Lying. Yeah. Stealing. Cheating. cheating uh, killing. Murder, right? Uh -huh. So we talked about that. What's the difference between killing and murder? What's killing and murder? Right? So murder is you didn't have the authority to kill nobody. Right? And you did it out of your own, your own, your own anger or your own emotion or whatever, whatever your motivation was. You, you made that and you didn't have the authority to do it. Killing is different. Right? If you had the authority, you're a police officer, or you something, you got the authority, and somebody's in danger, and you acted within your purview, acted within your authority, then you might, to save somebody, might have to kill somebody. If you're in the military or something, and you acting within your purview, or acting within your orders, then you might have to kill somebody. If somebody break into your house, or somebody try to do something to you, and you protect your family, you might have to kill somebody, right? That's different. But now if somebody break into your house, and they leave, and then you go chasing after them and you kill them. That's murder. That's different. You didn't have to kill that person. They broke into your house. They stole your stuff. That's revenge at that point. If you kill somebody out of revenge, that's murder. Right? So that's the difference between killing and murder. Right? Keep going. What else we got? We got dishonesty, cheating, and lying, and cussing, and murder. What else? What's another sin we need to turn away from? Fornication. Homosexuality. You know what I'm saying? A little funny bunny. You know what I'm saying? You got to leave that stuff alone. You know what I'm saying? Stay away from the sausage. You know what I'm saying? Don't do it. What? That's right. Right? Using, using. That's right. It's the same thing. Don't try to steal your brother's one. Right? Don't use the most high God name in vain. Right? What's another one? Second degree murder. Yeah, that one too. What? Huh? Sex outside of marriage, right? Inappropriate. Don't be running around here messing with these boys. Don't be running out messing with these girls. Pamela said, right? Joke. Respect them. Wait your darn turn and marry them, right? You sit your butt down, you marry and you avoid a lot. Of, listen, take it from me. <laughs> you will avoid a lot of this foolishness. Stuff you got to live with forever. You avoid a lot of this foolishness. You know what I'm saying? You sit your butt down, respect these women. You think yeah. you think you missing out on something? You ain't missing nothing. You ain't missing nothing. You gonna you gonna try to experience a whole bunch of stuff, and it changes how you look at everything, huh? Hurting someone? Yeah, you, you don't want to hurt nobody. What? What? That's right, boy. Go give it to me. Idolatry, right? Stay away from idolatry. Get them crosses off your darn neck. Get them. Get them. Get them. Huh? The, the fishes on the car. Look, you got my whole spiel. Go ahead. What's my next one? Yep, you having Jesus in the oh, church. Yeah, the little Jesus pieces. What? Yeah. No, having tattoos not a sin. Now, Woo, Mel, you act like you've been here before. You can't tattoo or scar or, or 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 scar your body for the dead. So you know you get the dead homie tattooed on you. You know what I'm saying? It's my man, dead homie. I got him right here. For sure, that seemed admirable because that's my man and I loved him. And I want to put something on to remember it. That's a sin, though. Books say don't do that, right? Wow. Don't tattoo yourself for the dead. You can tattoo. It ain't, nothing, it, ain't nothing, it ain't nothing in the book that's against a tattoo. I personally am against it. If y'all ask me, should y'all get a tattoo? I'm like, don't do it. It's a waste of time. But there's nothing in the book that say you can't have a tattoo. It just say, don't tattoo yourself for the dead. Also, don't shave off your head. Or the dead. So you know, you know what I'm saying? You got somebody that died and you mourn and you sad about it. You know, a lot of some women, when they get really, really sad, one thing that you just naturally want to do as a woman 
you naturally want to cut off your hair, right? So the same thing happened. That's everybody, right? The same thing that happened with men and women. When somebody dies, you naturally get really, really sad. And when you get to that sad state, you oftentimes want to cut off your hair, right? So we should never cut our hair. Don't mean we can't get haircuts, but just never get a haircut for the dead, right? That's not really a part of our culture right now. But if you go over into Thailand and all these different places, these monks, you'll see that when they lose a family member, they go. They, they, they yep, yeah, exactly. Uncle Daniel is one of them, right? You cut off all of the, all of the hair on your skin, right? And do all that. He just calling me. He ain't saying I, he ain't accusing me of that. What else? Give me something else. I don't know if they're reading the Bible, but they're reading something. That's right, homosexuality. What else? One more. That's a good question. But no, you didn't get the tattoo because he died because he is alive. So no, nah, you you would you would be without sin in that situation. But don't ever get your homeboy tattoo. I'm just this is my opinion to you. Don't get your living. Don't get no, don't just don't tattoo your homeboy on you ever because it's gonna look away. You're gonna fall into one of the other ones and say, you know what I mean? We're gonna look, we'll talk later. So, look, this is uh, this is uh, where we go, where, where we at? Uh, verse 20. Verse 20. This is Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 20. Watch this again. When a righteous man does turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him. He shall die because thou has not given him warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness, which he has done, shall not be remembered. But his blood right. will I require at thine hand. So if a person is righteous and they, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'll be doing the right thing. I'll be, man, I live right. I pray every day. I read the Bible. I don't be, I don't be cussing. I don't be lying. I don't be cheating. I don't be dressing and acting like a girl. I'm everything I'm doing is solid. Right. But then one day. Right. One day. Somebody come up to me, talk to me crazy at my job and I cuss them out. But it's just one time. What the book say is going to happen. All that good I was doing, everything, all that stuff I was doing my whole life when I was solid. I did this one little cuss. And I cussed them out this one time. Guess what? Most high God forgot about all that other stuff I was doing. Only thing he see in me is the last thing I did. Last thing I did was cut somebody out. So that's what most high God see. You a sinner. So he said, all my righteousness will be forgotten. Right? Keep going. Watch this though. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness, which he has done, shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless. If you warn a righteous man that the righteous sin not and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he is warned. Also, you have delivered your soul. Mm -hmm. And the hand of the Lord was there upon me. And he said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plain, and I will there talk with thee. Then I arose and went forth into the plain. And behold, the glory of the Lord stood there as the glory which I saw by the river Kiber. And I fell upon my face. Then the spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet and spake with me. And said unto me, Go, shut thyself within thine house. But thou so notice the man. glory of Yahuwah came up to him again, and again he fell on his face, just like before. Mm -hmm. Then the spear had to come into him again and place him up on his feet. So when the spear, whenever you're talking about spear, you're talking about like you, you know, you know, people say the energy, you know what I'm saying? I don't want no negative energy around me and all that. That's they don't know what they're talking about, but they're what they really talking about is spirits, right? So it's like the spirit spirits give you energy. Right. So when the spirit, when the when the set apart spirit, the spirit of the most high God enter into him, it gave him energy to stand up. Because at first he saw the glory and it, it took everything out of him. When he saw the glory of the most high God, he just fell down and fell on his face. And he should start. He had to worship the most high God because that's what God do to us. He take everything. He just bring you down and humble you. Right. So then the spirit had to come and re-energize him and stand him up on his feet. Right. Let's see. Keep going. Then the spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet and spake with me and said unto me, go shut thyself within thine house. But thou, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee and shall bind thee with them 
thou shalt not go out among them. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the root of thy roof of thy mouth, that thou shalt be dumb and shall not be to them a reprover, for they are a rebellious house. But when I right. speak with thee, I will open. So look, hold on. He said, he told him, he said, listen, they gonna put bands on you. In other words, they about to lock you up. They about to tie you up, right? And they about to take you away. And then I'm going to make it so that you can't talk. I'm going to make your tongue cleave to the top of your mouth. So you ever uh, you ever had like a nice sandwich? I mean, one of them good sandwiches on the white Wonder Bread. The good, I mean, a good sandwich. You put the good sandwich and you slap the darn mayo on that thing. Miracle Whip if you a Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? You put that thing on there. You slap a little cheese on there. And you got you not just one piece of meat because you ain't poor at this moment, right? You got three, four, five pieces of meat stacked on that thing. That thing looked like this. You know what I'm saying? Then you grab it. Oh, no, you ain't done. You ain't done. You might sprinkle a little bit of salt, a little <laughs> bit of darn pepper on there. Get you a darn slice of lettuce. Slap it on the back of that thing. You close that thing up and you... Um, mm, take, it, take it easy. We can put a little mustard on there. We can put a little mustard. Keep it easy with that tomato now. You know what I'm saying? Don't interrupt my story now. <laughs> Keep it easy with that tomato. Then you right put there. it down, so and nasty. you got to cut it. You get a little thing, you cut it, but you don't cut it down the middle. That's how white people cut it. You know what I'm saying? You got to cut it right down the darn set, edge to edge triangle. You break that thing out, and it look different. You eat that thing. Did you hear that, that, that darn lettuce? And that thing gets stuck right at the top, don't it? You get stuck, it's like... And you go like that. Now imagine your tongue getting stuck just like the bread did. You sound like a little, you know what I'm saying? A little, you know what I'm saying? You can't talk. Nobody eats white bread except you. Take it easy. Everybody take it easy. Everybody relax. Okay? Everybody relax. White bread is where it's at. You know what I'm saying? But go ahead. Uh, let's see what happened after his tongue gets stuck. But when I speak unto thee, when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, He that heareth, let him hear, and he that forbear, let him forbear, for they are a rebellious house. That's right. If they, in other words, he's telling them, I don't care how they react to you. You say what I tell you to say. If they hear you, that's great. If they don't hear you, that's fine too. I don't care how these people react to you. You do what you do. Let everybody react however they're going to react. That's not your business, right? We have to have that mindset. We can't be doing stuff looking for people to react the way we want to react. You know, you know what you're doing when you do that? When you do stuff and you want people to react the way you react, you manipulate. I don't care how you try to slice it, how you try to do it. You do stuff because you want to do it. A lot of us, we get, we, get in our, we get ourselves into situations and get our little hearts broke and all that stuff. Because we looking for somebody to react to us a certain way. And that's our motivation for making the decision. Right? I only, I am, I'm only about to, 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 to spend seven years being with you when you ain't got no darn car and you ain't got no darn job and letting you drive my, my job, my, my car, my job. I'm only doing that because I want you to love me a certain way or to like me a certain way. Right? So then the man in that situation, he driving his girl around, he doing all this stuff, letting her do it. And then she end up not appreciating him the way. Now, guess what? She feeling, he feeling like, oh, you broke my heart. Or she feeling like, oh, you broke my heart. I can't believe you did this. And then you harbor all this resentment for all these years. Right? You got friends that you sit with. It's like, oh, no, we friends. We friends. This whole time, I'm the only reason I'm texting you every day and the only reason I show up to you every day. It because I want that from you. I want you to text me every day and I want you to show up for me every day because don't nobody do that for me, right? And so I'm doing that to you because I want it from you. And then when I don't get it from you, guess what? Man, you were never my friend. Well, no, we probably wasn't friends because all this stuff that, that, that I liked you for, you was only doing it because you wanted back from me. You wasn't doing it because that's what you wanted to do. You were doing it because you wanted a reaction, Right? We can't be like that. What we have to do, we do stuff just because it's off principle, right? This person deserves this. I want to show appreciation. This person, this, or sometimes it's the opposite. Off principle, I don't want to do this. I know we friends. I know you expect stuff of me, but 
but I'm not going to do it because of X, Y, and Z. I didn't like how you was moving. I didn't like what you said. I don't like what you're standing for right now. This is not what I expect of you. So just because we friends don't mean I'm going to continue doing the same stuff, right? These are the type of th- these are the type of relationships we have. You had those type of relationships, whether it's a girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, husband, no matter who it is, whatever type of friend it is, I guarantee you, you'll weed out the fake and you'll bring in the real. And this is what he's teaching Ezekiel. He's teaching Ezekiel. It don't matter how they respond. The ones that's really going to do it, you ain't got to beg them. You ain't got to tap dance. Just say what I told you to say. They going to show up the ones that's real, really about it. And the ones that's not, that's fine. You did your job. You warned them, right? That has to be our mindset with everything we do when it comes to the most high God. He tell me to live righteously. I'm not looking for nobody to be like, you know what? You're so righteous. I'm not looking for nobody to give me a break and be like, you do the right thing. You don't deserve for nobody to do you wrong. Let me do right by you. No. If you live righteously, you know what people going to see? Food. They going to look at you and be like, oh, he can't cuss. Oh, well, I'm about to make him look stupid when he do something I don't like. I'm a tempt. I'm he can't you can't cuss. OK, I'm going to put you in that situation. Right. You tell him, look, I work on the Sabbath and I got to be out of here before sunset. Guess what? I'm going to try to make you work overtime. On Friday night. Right, because that's what these people do. They're going to test you. They want to see if it's real. Your job got to be, this is what the Most High God say. This is the commitment I made to the Most High God. This is what I'm about to do. I don't care how you react. I don't care if you say I'm fired. I don't care if you say you're not my friend no more. I don't care if you try to cuss me out. All that stuff don't matter to me. The only thing that matters to me is, what am I committed to do to the Most High God? That's it. Keep going. Watch this. That was the end of the chapter. That was it? All right, we ain't going to go to chapter four because it's about to get real in chapter four. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to wait next week. We'll start looking at chapter four. What? <laughs> yeah, but it's about to get real. You ain't ready for that tonight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, anybody listening? Any questions? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what's wrong with him, man. No questions? Any questions on the on the thing? In the chat? Uh. I had a question. She said, what was that? Huh? I can't hear you. She said, so we get a do-over after we repent from that unrighteous act is the question. Oh, because because he said, so so I think the question is, we live our life righteously. I mean, we doing good too. We ain't making no mistakes. We doing what we supposed to do, right? Then we we slip up somebody. Somebody, somebody made us mad. We react out of anger and we cuss them out. That becomes a sin for us, right? Everything that we did before, Most High God forgot. So I think the question is, then at that point, do we have a chance to turn away from that sin and then live righteously? The good thing about the Most High God, if I stop, if I cuss, right? I'm a sinner at that point. Most High God forgot all about that other stuff I do. He remembered the last thing I did. But what if after cussing, I was like, you know what? That was messed up. I ain't had no business doing that. I repent from that. I'm back on it. Most I got, I, I'm getting my life back together. I'm never letting that happen again. I'm never going to commit another sin ever again. And then I start walking righteously. How the most high God see me? It's righteous. Righteous. He remember the last thing that you doing. Right? If you die in your sin, you are a sinner. He don't remember none of the righteousness you did. And if you die in your righteousness, you are righteous. He don't remember none of the sin that you did. That's his, that's his deal. That's why our goal is to live the rest of our life without sin. We have to be able to call ourselves liars if we commit and we in our prayer, you know what I'm saying? We pray like, most of God turn me from sin. You know, I don't want to ever sin again. I want to live righteously towards you. All of us get into it and sometimes it be emotional and we say it, right? And then we go out and we sin. We have to call ourselves a lie. I was lying when I told you I repented. I was lying when I told you I wasn't going to do this. You know what I'm saying? No more. I did it. But this time I'm serious. And then we might make another mistake after that. You got to acknowledge I'm a liar. But if you keep playing that game with him, he going to take you up out of here and you going to die in your sin. You can't choose when you die. That's the gamble that you're playing. 
So you need to take it serious and you need to turn from your sin. But if for whatever reason you decide to commit a sin, you better repent because as long as you're still breathing, you got a chance. However you die, that's how the man going to see you. That makes sense? Any other questions? Did we miss any other ones? Was there any more, T? No, that was the only question. All right. Let's go ahead and pray out. I see y'all fellowship call. We're going to start tomorrow a little late. So we're going to start at five o'clock Pacific time as opposed to four o'clock Pacific time. So one hour later than we normally start. Um, if anybody want to join that don't got the link and all that, reach out to me. I'll get it to you. Other than that, I appreciate y'all. Let's pray out.